Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is a dark and stormy morning here, which is a good time to always discuss Poe, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, first, please keep up with my class as much as you can. If you're making those lists and crossing stuff out, I, trust me, it's really satisfying at the end of the day to go through that list and cross stuff out. So today, I'll try and keep this brief, but you know me. Uh, Nearpods for chapters 24 and 25 and chapters 26 and 27. Please make sure they are completed so we can put those to bed and put the textbook behind us. Okay, moving on to the mock exam. Mock exam, please do your best on it. Work on it alone. Please have that personal integrity. Work on it alone. This Friday, I will have in Canvas... Uh, it's going to be in a Canvas quiz where you can put the answers for 1 to 10. And then the next Friday answers 11 to 20. So by this coming Friday, try and have answers done on paper for 1 to 10. And then by the next Friday, 11 to 20. The uh, Canvas quiz will be open for two weeks. Two weeks for you to enter them in. But the catch is you can only go in once to enter in your answers, okay? So by this Friday, be prepared for 1 to 10, and then the next 11 to 20. So I don't expect by this Friday that you have all 20 completed. You can if you want, but I'm trying not to add too much pressure and stress on to everybody's lives. <clears throat> all right, so for your papers for this, please show all of your work how you're getting the answers on paper. Save that work. We're going to be scanning it and you're going to be uploading it to me since we're not coming back to our classroom. So you're going to scan this and upload it to me for evidence to support your answers for the mock exam, okay? Um, so as you go through this, before you scan it, on every single page, make sure that you have your first and last name, period number, and the date that you're working on it, okay? Um, the dates, you don't have to be very precise on, just you know, make sure that you have some kind of dates on there. Um, but first and last name on every single page. If you have a good scanning app and you already know how to do that, you may go ahead and do it as you complete the pages. Otherwise, just wait for instructions on that, okay? Uh, uploading it to me will be a completion grade in a couple weeks. Don't stress over that now. Right now, work on your own time to get the mock exam questions completed so that then you can key the answers into Canvas, okay? If you have any questions, please send a Canvas inbox message to me and again, from noon to three, my office hours, that's when I'll be answering your questions for them. Uh, if you haven't found the mock exam questions yet, go into modules and look for the post that's titled mock exam, the questions. Okay, follow all the directions, please. All right, so how this week is going to work. We have this, the beginning of the week video, which will count for Monday and Tuesday's attendance when you acknowledge it. And then middle of the week, we will have a PowerPoint on Casco of Amontillado, and there will be some questions related to the short story and the PowerPoint. Uh, and that will count for Wednesday's attendance. So if you have not yet read the short story by this time, Casco of Amontillado, uh, please choose one of the different options uh, to read the short story and have that read before you do the PowerPoint. There's spoilers in the PowerPoint, so you want to make sure that you read the story first, okay? All right, so Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, one of my favorite authors to teach, Poe 
was uh, writing as one of the dark romantics, which we now call a gothic literature author. Uh, but originally it was called a dark romantic. It was in direct relation to the romantic period in literature, which happened in North America and in Europe. The romanticism period itself was a response to the neoclassic period, uh, which was like in the 16 and 1700s. Then in the late 1700s, romanticism came about, and almost at the same time, about 10 years after it started, uh, the dark romantic started to emerge. So romanticism uh, talked about lush, beautiful landscapes. It often had a very idealized of romance. Uh, a lot of times there would be a very religious factor to it. Sometimes religion would help the main couple, couple get together. So these dark romantics were a direct relationship to this in that they flipped a lot of these elements on their head. One of the biggest elements of romanticism was a romantic hero, okay? This was the good guy that had to overcome obstacles, to get the girl in the end. So in the dark romantics, which became known as Gothic literature, you have the anti-hero. Probably one of the biggest, uh, most, let's say, um, famous, I guess, anti-heroes is Heathcliff from Wuthering Heights. If you haven't read Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights, and you want a good anti-hero, I mean, Heathcliff, he's like the epitome of the anti-hero. Girls, if you like a bad boy, you need to find uh, Heathcliff, okay? Wuthering Heights. Uh, think also like Dr. Frankenstein and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, okay? Um, Dr. Frankenstein's the main character, and he is certainly not a hero, he's an anti-hero. And then Poe, just about every single one of Poe's short stories, the main character, you could not say that they are heroic. They are an anti-hero. They have many flaws, um, and they often do not have the best of intentions in, uh, in the story. So think about in Cask of Amontillado. We have the main character of Montresor. Montresor certainly could not be called a hero, okay? So what I want you to think about is, is he an anti-hero? Is he a flawed character who does things because of the elements around him that aren't so good? Or is he a true villain, okay? Uh, he does plot to, spoiler alert, kill someone. Um, and spoiler alert, if you haven't read this, shut your ears, he gets away with it, okay? Uh, so is he an anti-hero, in your opinion, or a villain? So for this uh, attendance for Monday and Tuesday, that's what I want you to write in the comment for this video. Is Matrasaur a hero or a villain, in your opinion, and then just state why. I think Montresor is a hero because, or I think Montresor is an anti-hero because, or I think Montresor is a villain because, okay? All right, let's see if Moose is still over there. Yep, Moose is still there. He's sleeping with his ball. Um, I don't know why he likes that puppy ball, but he does. Nori, what are you sniffing? Hmm? Nori. And for those of you who have asked how many cats I have, the answer is way too many, okay? Um, Minion was just here a minute ago, but I guess she'll have to make an appearance later. Say goodbye, Moose. All right, so again, for this beginning of the week video, answer the question, and I'll put it in the text with this. Is Montresor an anti-hero or a villain, in your opinion, and why? Have a great start to the week. There will be a PowerPoint on Casco Amontillado midweek. And at the end of the week, there will be an end of the week video. And then also the Canvas quiz to put questions 1 to 10 for uh, the mock exam. 
All right, have a great beginning to the week. And please remember that I miss you and I love you. And even though we're not gonna see each other for the rest of the school year, I'm still here for you. You will always be my students. So whenever you need anything, I'm here, let me know.